Oh, well, do you want, then you want the entire introduction. Okay, I studied, <laughs> I come from Italy originally, studied in Italy, did my bachelor, master, and all of those things there. I moved a bit in um, the United States, very cold, incredibly cold in Michigan, did my doctorate there, and then moved uh, after a bit of working and peregrination a bit, moved in Australia in the currently eco uh, the, the uh, uh, Department of Econ Economic Development, man, it's a uh, twisting tongue, this thing. Um, <laughs> and we changed several uh, names in the meanwhile, as you well know. And uh, now we are, and I'm working uh, mostly on uh, poem and stone fruit, uh, mostly quality and physiology of the fruit in pre and post harvest. Currently, I would like to talk with you regarding pears at the moment. And uh, the department has uh, several projects. And here we are discussing a few of them, mostly related in the uh, issue of uh, maturity. Several people, as you can see, are involved. Let yes. I'll skip around a bit on the common pro problems. You, you guys know what are the problems of uh, pears, most of them. The most important factor from here is that uh, are mostly related to their maturity at harvest. The identification of the maturity in the fruit uh, and especially the correlation that has therefore in post-harvest uh, due to need of chilling and uh, 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 insurgence of uh, different uh, post-harvest diseases is uh, fundamental. And besides, Asian market is actually prefers uh, green and crisp fruit that many times are actually not really ripened. So it's a bit of a mess in trying to figure the ideal um, quality. So the department is several years is studying this uh, new technology, is a spectroscopy tec uh, technology that uh, gives a number that is the um, IAD index of absorbance difference, absorption difference, but the most important part that uh, you just have to bring home from this one is that uh, it's uh, an indicator of maturity. So it estimates in a certain way of maturity because it makes a correlation with uh, ethylene production in this particular case. Um, and that is a specific point of physiological stage of the fruit. That is the most important part. It's a physiology of the fruit. It's something that the fruit will always go through. And therefore, it takes it away from agronomic development, uh, uh, season. It takes it away from a lot of other things because th that fruit will always pass through that particular physiological stage. So when you correlate with, the um, with a particular number, then at this point, uh, you identify you are able to actually get an estimation of your maturity. So the goals of several uh, the, the projects that we have currently going at the department is to determine the for pairing specifically cla classes of maturity where we can aggregate the fruit with the same behavior in pre, well, mostly in post-harvest, let's say, correlate with uh, uh, particular aspects of uh, fruit physiology that will always give us uh, an a good indicator. And in this case, for many times, is ethylene, but not all fruit produce ethylene at harvest. To determine the optimum uh, harvest uh, um, time to create uh, the best uh, post-harvest uh, requirement and handling, and to determine effect of harvest maturity, and this is very important, to the effect of the harvest maturity, the correlation between the harvest maturity and the post-harvest behavior and requirement and all the handling and the cool storage to from there to deliver a very high quality fruit to the consumer. Because our job, mine as well, because I have to try to tell, to, to give you information on how to achieve it, our job is to sell that fruit and make money so we can continue working. So the, co the concept is to create these maturity classes. Maturity classes is a segregation of the fruit based on the, I assume it's the, yes, on the number, the IAD. Don't actually look at the numbers themselves. But the important thing is that we can segregate the fruit on common behavior based on these numbers. And, one and so we can monitor continuously. Now, the, the here we I divided the fruit in four different classes, starting with very immature. Very mature is in, in Williams and Lania. In this case, Lania is one of the um, pears that uh, our department bred, and uh, uh, Ian talked about it a bit this morning, is in one of the orchards. As you can see, their 
totally different numbers. So it, uh, this, the IAD that uh, is needed to segregate the fruit in these different classes depends on the variety. It depends on species because it can use on palm and stone fruit, but it depends on the variety. So it's a bit of a work in trying to identify these, these classes. And that's why I said that it is important to, uh, to check and use a specific physiological indicator of the, fi of the stage of maturity of the fruit. Ethylene in Williams, it's a good indicator because actually Williams do pro does produce ethylene. So we have, I identified the two varieties where there is no production of ethylene at two different stages of maturity, where very mature, and one I, I called an early peak. That is one that this the stage that is just prior before the production of ethylene. And so the fruit is still not ripening. It didn't start the process of ripening, but it will get there. The commercial is, from a scientific perspective, is the ideal because this will last a bit longer in the, in the storage and it will develop the quality to actually deliver and to create good quality fruit. The ready to eat, it talks by itself. And the commercial, and it is the ideal moment of harvesting, is when there is just the slight, the indication of really the starting of produce production of ethylene, is very, very small production of ethylene at harvest externally, not internal, externally. And that means that the fruit started the physiological trip, the physiological journey toward high quality. Lania did not produce at all ethylene at harvest, and so I identified these classes through post-harvest behavior to try to identify how actually it did happen. It, it did behave in post-harvest. Now, the, this technology is non-destructive, so you are able to follow from the field, and that is the most important part, to be able to identify how is, hap how is happening the, the um, maturity, how is developing in the field. And here we have two different varieties in 2014. As you can see, we have a bit of a lag here, and we were able to monitor this one. The fruit didn't ripen at all due to that this gray thing is temperature, very incredibly high temperature, and we ended up having uh, the harvest that was more or less for Lania in the ideal point was mid-February and William actually ended up quite close to end of February, theoretically, but as probably most of you did actually harvest much earlier than that. But the fruit was quite immature because there was this lag. This year, the Liza is another variety that uh, our department bred and again uh, Ian talked about, but this year we didn't have those temperature and Lania <laughs> produced and went straight toward harvest and actually the, the harvesting period was over two weeks earlier. Without this monitoring, you would not be able to actually get this higher quality of the fruit or the ideal quality of the fruit. Now it's possible to monitor in post-harvest as well because it's non-destructive. And this is the behavior of the four classes that I said before. And uh, at this dotted line is the identification of a moment where there was uh, some milliness and just one fruit for us was too much. It's no quality. So everything above and you can try to identify when is the moment that uh, that particular stage is reached due to the different classes. That is where the different behavior. And the very mature, it goes to 20 days before getting there. And someone can say, well, 20 days is actually a good idea. Why not? I can actually export my fruit. I can get there. It's just a bit of a stone, when I, a, a, a hard stone when I actually harvest it, but whatever. This is the reason. I use the sugar to acid ratio to identify consumer preference and consumer acceptabilities as is normally done for stone fruit. And the higher the number, the more the preference. And that very mature is the lowest number. It kept being the lowest, and it actually went even down. It never reached any acceptability for from the consumer. That fruit, yes, it will last 20 days before actually going off at room temperature, but it will never be an eatable fruit. And that is the most important part that it has to be recognized and why the importance of the fruit, of the maturity of the fruit at harvest. Well, obviously, the ready to eat was good was ready to eat at the moment, highest, most, the highest acceptability was ripen. And the important thing is that the early peak, the early peak when it is harvested, it was still 
not producing any, any ethylene, was immature, was still an immature fruit that was actually quite hard. Past the five days, reached the acceptability of all the other fruit. And so that is something that it could actually be worked with. Receiving a bit of a, of a cool storage, receiving a bit of um, management and ripening, it was able to actually get correctly to some place. And if we go, we identify it actually took over 10 days before going off. That is not too bad. For those that they don't produce ethylene, we tried to get other different methodologies, uh, but uh, for example, eth correlation with firmness, not perfect. There is correlation, but not perfect and not ideal to really clearly identify the different classes. So, okay, but just a secondary indication. So this DA technology actually, wo we notice that it works, it's applicable to pairs for estimating monitoring of fruit quality and fruit maturity. It is a valid index to monitor post-harvest performances as well, and protocols, they can be based on it because you can actually uh, always clarify. It is an estimation of the physiological stage of the fruit, uh, therefore, really, protocols can be based on, the, on this technology. There is, a, however, a need of more research to try to correlate correctly this particular index uh, with physiological stages of the fruit when the fruit does not produce ethylene, like maturity enzymes, volatiles, ethylene produced in post-harvest maybe, or the interaction with one MCP that blocks the, ma the, the ripening, so that could be something that we can identify, and it could deliver quite a bit of uh, uh, good information and profitability, hopefully, to the industry. And I think that I am done. Ha, 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 ha.